with bullet holes in the doors and things like that. And, and that's what we got told what, what happened. <laughs> Up in the air like spaghetti. It was insane. Jesus. Absolutely insane. Yeah. I had no idea what was going on. Um, yeah, you've got bed bugs and yeah. you'd wake up with sores and yeah, it's just, it was disgusting. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, um, that's pretty hectic. Yeah. G'day, I'm Jason and welcome to Fit for FIFO. This week, we meet Brett, the diamond driller from Tassie. He shares with us stories of working in countries such as Ethiopia. He also tells us how he manages to stay fit and healthy while working in remote locations. And finally, he shares with us an interesting little business plan he has, which involves farming mushrooms. Just a heads up, we had to cut out a few small bits due to some technical issues. Though apart from that, I hope you enjoy it. Here it is. <laughs> It's yeah, not happy. Kind of, does that, does that, that, right. that wide face? Yeah, that's good. Does it look like I'm wide? Nah, you look good, mate. That's fine. You look, From where I can see it's like anyway, all like, good. Look like you've just been at the gym, mate, working out, have you? No, nah, just having a red. Been entertaining. Having a rest. Oh, yeah, just nice been entertaining. One. I um, yeah, just, yeah. just excused myself from entertaining, so, yeah. All right, good. Uh, mate, I'll just start um, firstly, just to let everyone know that we're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, we're on Spotify now, and uh, we were on iTunes, and we're just having some problems at the moment, um, so that's where you can find us. How about yourself, Brett? Where can we find you, mate? Uh, pretty much Instagram. Um, yeah. I've, uh, I pretty much just use Instagram because it's it's like photos and videos. Um, I've yep. still got Facebook, so you can still talk to your mates um, from back in the day when yep. Facebook started. And so you can still get invited to parties and things like that. But um, I do is I use Instagram as um yeah, only, your own your morning. It's um only, only, rec morning. only recently changed um to own your morning uh, because I right. it's all about when I go to work is yeah getting it done in the morning and yeah I figured out yeah, that nice. that's what works for me. Nice, nice, cool. Um, so. Let's start off with um, a little bit about yourself and what you do in FIFO. Uh, diamond driller. Uh, a few diamond different types dri of uh, drilling, but um, mainly diamond drilling. Um, and yeah. as, as of right now, uh, Chinese driller, driller, um, and yeah, diamond drilling. And um, right now we're doing, it's actually geotechnical drilling um, up at the Snowy Mountains uh, so they can expand yeah. their hydro plant. Yeah. Right, right, nice. And, and uh, what other roles? What other? So what's what's um? So expanding the the hydro plant, nice. And how long are you up there for? Um, so they they don't really want us there for winter because you get snowed in mm. and um you can get stuck at work or can't get to work um as yep. much as we try and clear the way um and then mm. also you can't really turn the rig off or anything like that um so it gets a little bit uh too dangerous um uh -huh. but we do catch the start and and the end of the the winter so a bit of bit right. of snow and um half the blokes of the bed are actually there to enjoy the experience of a different sort of climate which is virtually why i went over there um yeah right but yeah we so i did last uh summer and then now this mm -hmm. is the second summer where um yeah this probably might be the last summer before we actually start uh digging the tunnel before they start digging yeah. the tunnel okay they're virtually putting a turbine 1k under the ground to um yep. to push the water comes down with uh gravity and yep. then um and it spins the turbine creates power for for sydney and for melbourne oh wow so quite, that's going to be, be a, yeah. quite a big project then i suppose yeah, inside, in, the future. in massive um cabin 1k under the ground wow it's gonna it's gonna take another six years before oh, they nice. can um, yeah so that'll that'll just start ramping up shortly, I, I assume. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. There's still another another nine holes, and then yeah, mm -hmm. that's where I am at the moment. Nice, mate. Nice. A bit closer um, to home. What um, other roles? What other roles have you done in um, FIFO? Is it mainly been around that sort of like drilling stuff, or? Yeah. So I started off um, virtual. I was at uni, 
And um, mm-hmm. at the time, I had a mate um, in drilling. He was going to be making a, a lot more than me, um, even when I'd finished uni. Um, and all he had yeah. was a truck license. And he, he wasn't too switched on. So I thought, if he can do it, I'd say uh, I'll definitely be able to do that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I went, yeah. went into drilling back when I was 21. Um, and uh, we bought Longyear in diamond drilling. Uh, and then I went over to a bigger rig doing mud rotary style drilling. Um, that company actually got sued. And then they, they said that we'll get you another job um, to tour this. And um, that another job was actually in Africa. Wow. Um, so went over to Africa. And then after Africa, went um, offshore as a um, solids control engineer, running pumps virtually. Right. And then uh, from that to roughnecking, and then back to land rigs to where I am now. Right. So, so what's the difference between a roughneck and, um, and a driller exactly? Uh, roughneck is virtually a labourer. Have you seen the movie by any chance um, with uh, Matt Wahlberg where he's the rig's on fire and over in off the coast of America? He, so he no, was an, in that movie, he's an electrician. And they've got the right. roughnecks. Um, and the best, um, without getting into too much detail, the best thing I'd say to people is that they're roughnecks. That's what. Um, it's Blue Water Horizon. That that's the movie. Oh, okay. um, where they they had the massive oil spill and um, yeah, remember how BP did that over on off off the coast of America on the uh, west yeah. coast of America. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a roughneck. Yeah, right. So the roughneck um, throws pipe. Um, you drill down right. to to five six k's, and then when you're actually mm-hmm. drilling, I'm um, I'm down in the shaker house. Uh, where you've got um, all your mud returns and you're helping the derrickman, who's um, actually, uh, it's got nothing to do with the actual derrick, he's down at the pumps. And yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, roughnecking's um, 12 hours a day of just labour. Just labour. Yeah, it's, those big yeah, it's, it's, so out of all those jobs, roughnecking nice. is the most physical job, yeah, even though all the other ones are physical as well, but yeah, roughnecking right. is where it's at. And being a derrickman's yeah. job. Right, and so the driller, you're obviously con- you controlling um, like the the equipment that's doing all the drilling. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so for example, like um offshore, the the pullback. Mm-hmm. So the amount of weight that the the head or the top drive can pull back is um yep. like, to make a comparison um is two million tons, um mm-hmm. and the rig that I'm on at the moment can do thirty thousand tons. So that's wow. So, to be, a, to be a driller offshore, it normally takes um, uh, like 12 years, but to become a driller on land, you can, depends on your situation, if they uh, need to push people out quickly or anything like that, you can do it within a year sort of thing. Right, right. Yeah. But then you're, you're never ready. When you become a driller, you're never ready. You're constantly learning. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning. The bloke, uh, the senior driller that we've got out where we are, he's still learning and they're, they're not shy to say that. Even though he's been doing it for um, actual drilling for fifteen years, right? And, yeah. and the roughnecks probably is that, that's the more risky, sort of dangerous. Um, yeah, so you're at sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in the line yeah. fire every second of the day. Um, out there, they've got this thing about drops. So yeah. you know, you know, like an, an offshore rig, where you've got a massive mast and everything's above yeah. your head. Um, yeah. So this thing about drops, where even if a nut falls off a bolt. Or anything like that, um, they calculate um, the severity of that drop, and yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it's these things so, go through your shoulder. And, yeah, wow. Well, and so the, the, um, the driller is the driller, I suppose, like the captain in a sense. He he like wears all the liability if something goes wrong. Is he like the guy in control? Yeah. Or? So normally, um, it's just two or three of you on a rig. Where offshore, mm-hmm. there's um, say 60, 70 people asleep. And then 60, 70 right. people at work. Um, so you've got in the, so it's called the doghouse, believe it or not, is where the driller sits. Um, yeah. And he, he's virtually, so on land, you're in charge of everything. Mm-hmm. Where offshore, yeah. you're, you're virtually get told your parameters, get told what to do. But then you, mm-hmm. you're in, it, it's, it's very full on. Um, you can, right. you've got, you virtually have those 120, 140 blokes' lives in your hands as a driller. Oh, wow. But there's a few positions out offshore, the same same thing. You've got the lot your their lives in your hands. Like um the subsea bloke, uh the BCO, okay. barge captain, everyone. Tool pusher. Yeah, right. And 
Uh-huh. Um, and you often hear like that working on these drill rigs that like you hear there's a lot of crazy things happen and and um oh, hear yeah. some stories. You got any any stories out there? Um, memorable moments that you that stand out in your mind that you've well, there's experienced a lot of enjoyable moments. Um, but at one stage yeah. we um we did hit gas. Um, another stage Ooh. our lifeline, which is the BOP, the blow off preventer, which is gas uh-huh. coming up. Um, it's the second yep. line of um, of protecting you, um, mm-hmm. where that was not operating correctly, so it was wasn't going to do anything if anything was to happen. It was leaking, so virtually mm-hmm. it's like a spark coming up onto something that is run by diesel and um, all sorts of other um, ignition points on the rig. It just literally would blow up. Um, so yeah, we've had the one with the we like we had a kick and then we we're controlling the kick would have been the most full on stage. And I was in the shaker house, um, very important part of it. Um, and you're virtually trying to put more weight onto what is coming up. The amount of pressure that's coming up, you're trying to beat it with yep. the amount of weight you're putting on it. And that wow. went for weeks. weeks. Well, was that, was that onshore or offshore? Offshore. offshore um, right. A weird one back when I first got into it, um, we were putting PVC pipe down a hole that we just uh, drilled. Um, and so you're virtually feeding down this 12 metre long bit of PVC pipe at a time, down about 250 metres. And um, we opened the foot clamps, which is what um, you're, you're using that, and the offsider at the time, which was me, um, is holding yeah. it and uh, doing it so it doesn't fall down. And you're gluing yeah. it, holding it, gluing it like that. Um, and anyway, right. open the foot clamps and about 80, 90 metres at the time of PVC just went whoop, up in the air like spaghetti. It was insane, Jesus. absolutely insane. Yeah. I had no idea what was going on. Anyway, wow. then, then the geo that doesn't normally come out, which is virtually the boss, is the client. Yep. Um, and they, they were saying to me, go make it look like you're measuring it out. This didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, but it's just spaghetti, like shards of PVC everywhere. Out in the desert. Is that it's just inside. gas, like just press, build up the gas or water? Or? I t- I've got no idea. But you, if you were to no think way. about it, gas is probably the answer. Um, but the yeah. thing is, that was an open hole. It had static water in it, which water is nothing compared to gas. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, there's no weight holding the gas back. It probably was gas, but we didn't have any yep. gas in there previous to that occurring at the end of a hole. Right. Yeah. And uh, what sort of, and you guys do pretty big hours. They change a fair bit. How many hours like, are you working in each shift? Uh, so at least 12. And mm-hmm. um, you're not really supposed to do more than 16. Okay. But that, that's, is that common for you to be doing 16? Um, it depends what's going on. If you're under the pump, right. if you're trying to get something back. Yep. To, and um, the, the, ne- the night shift might not be as onto it or anything like that. Or if you're doing it together, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it can, it's a, it, it's not a, as common occurrence, but yeah, you do. So some some jobs you end up having to do fourteen hours on a regular basis, and I'm yeah. I'm very lucky at the moment where I'm actually just doing twelve hour shifts, and it, as okay. soon as that, it's pretty solid that it's going to be twelve hours. When you wake up, you're yeah. doing yeah. Is that that? And and when you're doing these big twelve to sixteen hour shifts, are they? Is it go 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 the whole time? Do you have any downtime in there or? Um. So diamond drilling is considered as gentleman drilling. Um, so once okay. you actually get to the stage where you're drilling, um, mm-hmm. that's when you're doing maintenance. It's when you're um, getting on top of things. So you virtually try yeah. and smash out um, as an offsider, as the offsider. Um, there, go, go, go. Um, it depends on the company, what the drill is like or the supervisor is like or anything like that. Uh, but yeah. to, you're, it's never-ending catch-up. You're never on top of everything. If you are, something's about to happen. Um, yeah, right. yeah, it's yeah, they'll be ready to go. Um, and then, then for drilling itself, it's all about getting to the stage where you're actually drilling. And if you get mm-hmm. to drill, 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 it's an epic shift. But if, if you were to drill all shift and yep. nothing happens, yeah, you've you've had a very, very good shift, yeah, especially right. if you can link up shifts like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, and the dangers like what are the main like risks that you have i suppose is um gas and and the equipment that you're using is that so it's pretty much um 
all the pipe itself mm-hmm. um and then all yep. the chances you know all the all the finger injuries and things like that and then also uh line of fire um mm-hmm. a lot of people um like might pull a shoulder out um or they'd have um different injuries like that where they get struck by a pipe um yep. yeah yeah mainly how, line how of fire. so each three meter rod itself yeah is about 35 kilos which is hq height which is about four inches of core so it's a bit larger than yeah. that um mm-hmm. so it's 35 kilos each but then we do it in nine meter lengths six meter lengths you have to pick up that pipe itself and it's, it's so it's not like picking up 35 kilo weight which is a nice mm-hmm. easy pickup it's it's all about uh technique and how you hold on to it the balance of it and then you're walking across mud to yep. put it into a very specific position, yeah, it's right. yeah, it's all technical. Yeah, so, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of blokes that come out here that are quite big and strong and look like they can kill it, and they'll um, yep. they'll hurt their wrist, or they'll yeah not have the technique correctly, and they try and muscle it, and yeah, it's a it's a yeah, weird a lot of back, a lot of back injuries with that from twisting and moving. Oh yeah, but um, we had a last kid, so was a bloke did a hernia. Oh, right. Yeah, in his guts. Yeah. He um he actually got out of a camping chair and uh, did a pulled a hernia. So it's got nothing to do with what I was just talking about. Uh, it's hilarious. This bloke is um is uh, I think it was finishing a run. So you got to go uh-huh. stop the pipe spinning, turn the pump off, all that sort of stuff. Great call. Um, he yeah. was like, oh yeah, run's finished. Went to get up, pop hernia. No shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so offshore, um, what's the, like the main differences, I suppose, offshore compared to drilling on land? Like, yeah. So pretty much offshore, I find it very interesting, and it would take you uh-huh. a decade to get your head around everything to do with offshore. There's n- there's that many moving parts. Yep. It's a uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of kit. Um, and mm-hmm. the ones that we were on were built in like the 70s, the 80s, and then they try and upgrade them a little bit here and there. So it's called yep. third gen, fourth gen, fifth gen, uh, where now if yep. you've gone to a new rig, they're virtually up to uh, eighth generation where it's a lot of, uh, it takes the human element out of all the all the hard parts of doing the job. Um, so when we, uh-huh. a lot of the rigs are still in Australia as well because uh, Australia having a rig in Australia is very very expensive. Um, mm-hmm. it, so you have older rigs in Australia. Yeah, there are a couple of new rigs, um, but yeah, in general, I've only ever been on old rigs. Put it that way. Um, so it's yeah. all physical. You're wrapping your arm around um, the pipe. You're putting it over the stump. Mm-hmm. You're pulling the slips out. The slips itself weigh um, say 120, 150 kilos. And they come out of the ground right. every two minutes if you're a tripping pipe, roughly. Could be one minute. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. You can do that by yourself, with the correct right. technique, or you can do it with two people. Yeah. 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 You're supposed to have two people. So is there a bit of machinery that is there a bit of machinery like that's lifting it and you're just guiding it? Is that how it works? Or? So virtually it's a drill floor, and then you've got where mm-hmm. the slips go, and they're like fingers. Yeah. Like that. So when the pipe right. comes down, it locks in, wedges in like that, and um, it would be a foot of steel that wedges it in. That's about how tall the, the slips are. And then, then the drill floor itself right. is like right. you know, a foot in thickness of steel. Yeah. Uh-huh. And how do you go, um, like, with everything else offshore, like... Um exercise like training sleeping is, is it a, do you find it a lot different to uh working on la- uh, land rigs and stuff like in terms of yeah so lifestyle? so offshore there's a lot more um uh, similar minded people to myself that want to get out there mm-hmm. and be fit but to, to get be fitter when they they get home um yeah mm-hmm. so you you go out there there's no drinking like it's not even an option mm-hmm. unless you somehow smuggle it out there which i've never come across uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah, so there's no drinking for four weeks. You work four week stints, mm-hmm. by the way. Um, yeah, so you go out there. Um, the food is generally very good. Um, yeah. You actually get smokos. Um, so when I when I used to be in the shaker house, I didn't really get smokos, but um, 
you actually get smokos if you're say if you're not a rough neck you get smokos yeah um but where right, right. um in comparison to land if you want to eat you have virtually got it in one hand and you're eating that while you're working yeah. you when you're on yeah. land you work for 12 hours yeah where yeah. offshore you've yeah. got um you'll be like oh you can smash it out for three hours because you're gonna you're gonna get a wrap or you're gonna get to have a coffee or right. yeah um but then the so you're in um uh, cabins of there's there's four beds or two beds in a cabin uh where two of those people are at work or one of the other persons at work um you get treated real good offshore you get treated like a king offshore and then on land uh for example um in savage river we didn't even have so there was one dude that had been to jail and he was saying that, it, that the cells are bigger than what we were staying in so the dongers that we're in yeah that was northwest coast of tasmania yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So land, um, it, the blokes are more so um, into their drinking and um, just having a pie and a coffee and a beer. Where offshore, it's yeah, yeah, you get paid a lot more money as well. So you, yeah, yeah, yeah. four weeks on, four weeks off. Right. Compared to my last hitch was three and a half weeks with five or six days off. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hectic, lot different, hey. And and are you? finished offshore or are you just like it is not you i'm know, still interested um at, so at the time yeah. when i was finishing up offshore when the so it's all contracts um so at the time mm -hmm. the, the contract was coming up and i always say oh we're going to extend the contract or we're going to go do this other contract um but at the time um if you remember uh back a couple of years ago the oil price was down to i think it got down to 15 dollars a barrel so I was yeah. lucky to even be yeah. offshore at the time. Uh, there was probably yeah. um, there was thousands of blokes with the same skill set as me that didn't have a job when I did have still have a job. So I was I was counting myself lucky at the time, but now I've been a little bit unlucky mm -hmm. to not still be back offshore now that it's ramped back up to about sixty seventy dollars a barrel American dollars. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I I'm very much so interested in it. But in saying that, I've, um, I do enjoy yep. land rigs very much so. Um, offshore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd never say never, no. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But I'm loving what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm loving the fact that um, it's pushed me towards um, what I'm looking at the mushrooms. Um, yep. If I wasn't working on land, I wouldn't have heard about the mushrooms because I was. For the podcast, um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and, um, and you don't have when, when you're not making as much money anymore, you look at um trying to improve that sort of situation. So that's what's now leading to more something that's very exciting with the the yeah. uh, life cycle mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, which we'll get into. Oh, just lost him. Stand by there, um, Brett's just. I think his internet's taking a dive down there in Tassie. Just wait for him to come back online. So Brett was just mentioning that he is getting to farming mushrooms, which we're going to dig into very shortly. So you were just saying you were mentioning um, you met. Oh, you heard about the life cycle mushrooms um, on the on the yeah, land. Actually, um, it was the, the uh, it's called uh, Plant Proof Podcast um, and Life Cycle right. went on that. Um, a couple of blokes directly okay. from Freo. Uh -huh. um that also work away um and right. yeah the fact that they did work away um they're like oh this gives us a perfect opportunity to um start a business um with their time uh -huh. off and yeah so right. they 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 use the working away making making more money to be able to start a business and um mm -hmm. yeah the time off that you get yep. to be able to, to yep. break away which a lot of people aim yeah, to do right. Yeah. All right. Well, let, let's dive into this, um, into the mushroom farming and stuff. So, do you actually do you actually? Um, I thought I think I saw you, you were using mushrooms for like energy supplements or something, were you? At some stage. Yeah. So, um, I from that podcast itself, um, and from yep. looking into it as well, um, I was looking into cordyceps, which is a type of right. mushroom, um, as a it's it's a performance enhancing sort of pre workout natural um pre workout. 
properly work out instead of having um, all that other bad stuff, all those other chemicals that you put in your system to amp yourself up, which yeah. um, I, I, I do take previous to that, do take pre-workout. Um, right. And I've, I've always wanted to know a better way, a more natural way to get yourself going, which is also to yep. do with cold showers, which I'll talk about a bit later. Um, okay. But yeah, um, yeah. so cordyceps um, itself became famous by the, it's the, the Chinese or the Japanese um, Olympic team who they, right. they, they were breaking records and they got drug tested. Okay. And it, the main thing that I was taking were cordyceps. Um, it, right. it seemed to um, increase your VO2 max by 2% if you do train. If you don't train, up to 15%. And, um, yeah, it works okay. on your, your ATP. Um, yeah. yeah. It's awesome. And, um, that's just and one it's all legal. Kind of the, yeah, yeah. It's, it's legal, obviously, as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, not, um, okay. it's not suicide or anything like that. It's not a hallucinogen yeah. or anything like that. And do you like still that. use them? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I've got yep. my partner, Lou. Uh, loves it. Um, another bloke over here, um, Ed, loves the um, the mushrooms since we've introduced him to cordyceps and a few other mushrooms as well. Yeah. Um, there's a few few mates that we have over in Sydney. Um, one of them is actually behind me. I can hear him. Um, he yeah. he loves his cordyceps and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the shit, mate. Well, you gotta, you, 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 I know that you train as well. You do your your crossfit. Yeah. Um, I can hear it. Um, he'll be able to get you going. With the, with the pre-workout, like you were saying, um, I'm also of the same um, inclination with the not eating before exercising um, because it's mm -hmm. in the morning as well because of, I, I also fast uh, 16 hours yep. off and uh, eight hours on, sometimes 18 okay. and six, depends what's going on. Um, yeah, so previous, I don't know, about five years ago, so you'd think, I, I from my own opinion, um, I thought that you had to eat before you train, eat straight away after you train, all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, I yep. find that I also perform better, think quicker, more sharp, all that sort of stuff, get more done in a fasted state. But, um, right, right, but yeah, yeah. If, you, if you take a small amount of cordyceps, that's not breaking you fast. If you have a black yep. coffee, it's not breaking you fast, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Right, right. But, um, yeah, um, I'm, 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 I'm full on um, agreeing with you with the no need to – but do you, do you train in the morning or in the afternoon? Oh, I, I've just started training in the afternoon, to be honest. I used to train early mornings, like 6 a.m., but in the last sort of six to, uh, six to 12 months, I've noticed I've been getting a few injuries and stuff, um, which I've never had before. So I've changed to train in the afternoon. So, I, like, my body's warmed up. Um, yeah. You know, I've been moving in the morning. Usually, like, I'll start in the morning day, yeah. Yeah. And then um, by the afternoon, my, my, um, my body's good to go, you know, for, for the gym. And I've noticed it's made a big difference. I'm, yeah, no more like niggly injuries and stuff. I think it's just the product getting older, mate, you know, just clicked over 30, yeah. 32 now. So, yeah. 32. Um, just getting yeah, started. Well, 30... <laughs> um, yeah. So, and now back to the mushroom. So you're actually, uh, which is, is it called obviously farming? Like, yeah, it's considered uh, farming yeah. as a category. Yeah. Um, so virtually right. there's a, there's a uh, 40, a 40 foot sea container on its way over to mine. Um, it's currently wow. getting um, trucked from Devonport, which is the top of uh, Tassie, down to yep. one of the most southern points of Tasmania, which is where I am in South Arm. Um, yep. Yeah. Once that arrives, I'm going to start doing samples to restaurants and cafes and get, getting the word out there. Right. So you're yeah. going to grow your mushrooms I, in a 40 foot container? Yeah. So virtually you get um, it's, it's coffee waste. So as you know, when you go get a coffee at a, at a cafe, that mm -hmm. small amount of coffee that's actually used, and then the rest of it is mm -hmm. just chucked away into the bin. Yeah, um, right. you can use it for all sorts of stuff. Um, and the and the boys at Lifecycle realise that they can actually do uh, the 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 mushrooms actually eat eat the coffee, and they grow from the right. coffee. Okay, that's interesting. So it's virtually it's so recycling, it's organic. It's vegan, yeah. Yeah. So, is this something that you want to uh, have take over your drilling, um, like overwork drilling, and this is going to be like your uh, um, full-time gig, or? Yeah. So it will overlap for now. Right. And then, um, but yeah. So I've been in this industry for uh, nine years now. Um, but right. for now, there's there's no. I'm not going to see you to be quitting. Um, as of when the container rocks up, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, yeah. it will be. Give it a few years' time. Um, 
which it will be a success for sure. Um, the mm-hmm. way that I see it, panning all out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It will be. It will eventually take over drilling. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. And you're also um, what other? You're also involved in a few other little projects. Yeah. So the very first business that um me and my partner uh, Louise started uh, was a scanning business. Yep. So it's an in-body scanner. Yep. Um, we we used to do. You know how F45s have their eight-week challenge, and then also other gyms that oh, yeah. um say have a challenge for their for their members to um say put on size or lose weight or just eat healthy and uh try and make yep. them do that um for an ongoing basis um so yeah we we use our scanner to scan them at the start of the, the challenge and then at the end of the challenge or just scan people in general if they want to see where they're at with their fitness see if what yep. the effort that they're putting in is actually um benefiting them or not if they should t- do a different form of training eat differently yeah yeah um so yeah it's a it's a scanner that was the first thing we got into over in perth um and then at the time we were my partner's from tasmania um i'm from Fremantle. um we were moving over here so we got ourselves another scanner um and we started started off the scanner that one of the kind which was in tasmania at the time now there's a few little um cheaper versions of our scanner kicking around but we're still the the main scanner uh for tassie Right, cool. We, nice. um, yeah, we, we travel okay. all the way to the top of the state, bottom of the state, to, to scan people for mainly for challenges. Okay, cool, cool. And you were telling me you mentioned yeah, so to me uh, about Louise. Uh, you, you said she had a, a world record. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, back um, at the end of last year in November. Uh-huh. I'd say it would have been. Mm-hmm. Um, she had a crack at the one hour burpee world record. Um, so just burpees <laughs> non stop for an hour. Yeah. yeah. So it, you know, you, you'd, you'd be knowing what a burpee is. And um, a lot of the people yes. on your page would know what a burpee is. Uh, so this is a technical burpee where you can't just bounce off the ground. Like, so say you even get your chest to the ground and then you bounce back off. You can't do that. Yeah. You've got to put your arms out. Oh. Straight, straight away from your body and then come back in, right. push back off and be perfectly right. straight. Have your feet come yeah. over a certain line, go behind a certain line. It was insane. Uh-huh. It was a technical burpee. Wow. And she did uh, 709. Wow, in an hour. Yeah, yeah. She was just, was that, it was insane. Was it, was, it was great. To, um, we had um, hundreds of people um, come into a hole. Uh, we had a wow. DJ to get Lou going. And there was a few, it was quite funny, a few of the songs she actually did more burpees uh, because yeah, right. of the tunes itself. Uh, uh-huh. She got to be a little bit carried away at the start and um, but she yeah. got over the line. She was on in, in, doing an insane pace at one stage there. Uh, but yeah, yeah. so uh, as of right now, if um, anyone else that's ever done a, a record would know it takes forever to get all the, all the paperwork through and to get approved. But um, we yeah. saw her do 709. Um, she had to get 700. And yeah, we hundred percent think that she's got it. Um, she's been wow. in conversations with um, Guinness Guinness Book um, as of only like last week, and yeah, it's, it's looking yeah. good. But asking the so sort of question, it sounds like film? It's got it. yeah, nice. yep. Um, at the time, it was uh, live feed on on Facebook. Oh, incredible! Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. How, how do you, would she flog you in burpees, or do you reckon you give her a run? Uh, so at one stage there, we went to a CrossFit gym in Tassie and um, we were supporting someone else, uh, a bloke that was doing um, burpees. Um, and at the time, mm-hmm. I did um, 800. Um, but it's they were, it's, a, it's just a burpee, like a normal burpee, yeah. um, where right. if you were to do, if she was to do the normal burpee per se, she would be able to get yeah. a, yeah, you know, eight, 900 burpees. Um, yeah, I, I've definitely pushed her previously but she's an absolute burping machine it's like it's it's her thing um if you rock up to bro fit which is this, this single that i've got on here is guaranteed at some stage yep. you'll be banging out burpees all thanks to luke <laughs> loves them awesome. loves them yeah. <laughs> oh, um mate going back to uh drilling so you, you were telling me that you worked over in africa for um for a while yeah, went over there for um, it was about ten months all up, um, yep. and it's, it's a place called Danipul Depression in Ethiopia. 
Um, yeah, it was an absolute experience and a half. Um, I was very, I'd say I was very naive at the time and the old way of um, Australians saying she'll be right sort of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did not know what I was getting myself into whatsoever, but um, yeah. it was work. So you- um, it was a it was a chance to go overseas to to do what I do, and yeah, yeah. and to give back a little bit as well. Uh-huh. And so, what did you fly into, like just the um, capital of Ethiopia, and then transport to this place, or how did how did you get there? And what? Yeah, what it was, was insane. Uh, so we, we flew from from Perth to Dubai to the capital mm-hmm. of Ethiopia. Um, and then we, um, it's Addis Ababa, and then to a small town called Macali. We, we flew there, and, which is uh, it's like it's, it's a uni town. Um, you know, when you say you, you think of Ethiopia, you think of um, insane um, long distance runners. We got to see that firsthand, yep. which was insane. Um, they all run at an altitude of so that town itself is two thousand meters above sea level. Yeah, so from Perth to uh, uh, Dubai to a place yep. called Addis Ababa, which is the capital of yeah. Ethiopia, to a little town right. called Macali. And then from Macali, on a very small little plane um, that you fly from 2,000 metres above sea level to 200 yeah. metres below sea level to Danical Depression. The depression part right. of the name is due with the fact it's, it's down in a ditch sort of thing. 200 metres below right. sea level. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, There's a lot of... there's. Right. When we're used to road rules and things like that in Australia, there's there's a thing called um, chat over there that they can they can eat and they get high on, and you can actually hallucinate from chat. And it's just a it's just a leaf wow. off a off a bush, um, easy access. Mm-hmm. You literally just pick pick a leaf off a bush, through it. Yeah, it's insane. So they can drive on that sort of stuff. Insane. Right. Um, uh, honey wine. If you were to have a, a bottle of honey wine, you one might have three percent, the next one might have fifteen. Who knows right. what you're going to get when you when you drink that? But um, we also had a uh, it's called a it's a camel train that um goes out and to a salt mine out where we were, and there were these blokes mm-hmm. that looked like they were fifteen, going out to work yep. with a hammer and a chisel and two or three camels, and uh, you know that um chalky string that you, you tie things up with, um that's all they oh, went yeah. out to work with. And I would chop out um, a block of salt, which was about a kilo, and then I'll have 200 kilos tied to this camel. Insane. That's right. gone past our drill site. Yeah. Right. right. And also, like safety, did you guys have to have like um, any personal security with you while you were um, working there? Or yeah. Yeah, we had. Uh, it's called militia. Um, protected us. Right. Um, at the time, uh-huh. there was. Um, a war going on across the border, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, right. And so you were there for eleven months. Did was there any incidents while you were there? That- so an in, uh, an incident that happened out there. Um, a a bloke that was so because we um, worked in the Danical Depression and it was two hundred meters below sea level. The the tide that came in from the Red Sea. Was just insane. Go for k's and k's and k's, similar to what you people experience in um up in Northern Territory. Um, so right. we had to have a, a a road to the drill site, the drill pad up up nice and high. So we had all these construction blokes that were Ethiopian, um, that would build our pads per se. Anyway, um, there was a bloke that was on chat. Um, they've all got AKs. Um, they're the ones that are potentially protecting us. Um, yeah, so they um, had a bit of a night of it, and this bloke that had quite a lot of chat thought that the truck was turning into a monster. Um, so he shot up um, quite a few trucks with his AK. Oh, and um, in the morning, we, we went to work, and um, I've got there's actually photos on my Facebook of trucks with bullet holes in the doors and things like that. And, and that's what we got told what, what happened. And yeah, yeah. So it's just like that. Uh, also, with the, the militia protecting us, they you never really did know if anything did really happen, if they would actually protect us or not. And, yeah, so it was right. full on. Not long yeah, after right. when I left and Ethiopia, was there, a few planes got hijacked out there. Oh, Jesus. And was, was there anyone in the, the trucks when this guy was shooting at them? No, nah, so it was, it was of the night. So, yeah, it was just parked up truck. That was apparently turning oh, into right. a monster. 
<laughs> Jesus. Hectic. <laughs> wow. Mm. And would you go, would you go back to Africa? Um, I think I feel like I've had that experience. Um, we're, the, the contract itself was going to go for five years and um, it got canned after that 10 months. Unfortunately, so I was in there. I was in there for the long haul, um, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So we had a question from uh, Terry um, from FIFO Inspo, and he wanted to know what what's the weather like over work where you're working uh, in Africa compared to Australia, and are the flies <laughs> as annoying as the flies in Africa uh, in Australia? <laughs> so um, we've um, yeah. So over in Ethiopia, um, it was. Uh, this is the hottest place. It's considered the hottest place in the world. It's just got the Danny Cool Depression. There's actually a, there's a BBC documentary on it, um, and it just talks about um, how the dry heat. There's uh, there's volcanoes over there. There's sulfur pits. Um, it's just hot. So the, even the type of drilling that we're doing there was um, geothermal, which is where when the your muds come back up, your returns come up. You can't. It's like as hot as a coffee. So you're talking 60, yeah. 70 degrees um, where you can't, where normally you, you're hands on with all your gear. You can't touch the pipe um, when it's first come back out of the ground and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of cavities. We had a lot of uh, dramas actually drilling out there. We've um, lost returns yeah. and yeah. But um, yeah, the flies, wow. I can't even remember to be, to be honest, the flies mustn't have been too bad because I don't really remember about the flies there. Wow. Is it, um, and is it a dry heat? Yeah, so at some stages, the, the wind itself is hotter than the temperature. It's in, yeah, so if, when you, you cop that um, in the afternoon, um, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, as a lot of people know, um, that the work away, that works in anywhere that's hot, which is virtually most of Australia, um, you can't even touch like the, the pipe, you can't have, leave your hand on some, some steel or anything for too long. It's just extremely hot. Um, if anyone out there has heard of um, a place called, say, Telfer, it's similar to Telfer up, uh, up in the northwest coast of Australia. Yeah. All oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so you, and you're pretty, pretty much done there. You wouldn't go back, eh? Uh, yeah, I'd say I've been there, done that sort of thing. But um, I wouldn't take back going there in the first place. The fact that nothing happened definitely helps with that. But um, yeah, yeah. We um, we walked around with knives. We had knives. Um, we, back in the day when um, yeah. So we had yeah, we had knives. Yeah, we, we were told after the first hit, they were like, you should probably get a knife when you're going to come back. And yeah, yeah. It was funny actually. I took a kettlebell. Oh, we, I no, on this would have been 23 22 23 oh god yeah so that's yeah. that's where the naive bit comes in as, as i said yeah um where it's like oh yeah she'll be yeah. right sounds like fun yeah. <laughs> um i actually um got down <laughs> yeah. to um 55 kilos when i was in africa it was just it was real bad like we weren't we were eating um we we're eating uh goat um, if anyone out there's had goat before, um, it was actually quite nice. It's yeah. very tough, but um, you get used to it. And you can do curries and things like that. But um, it was yeah, not good. And that's that's fifteen kilos lighter than I am now. So yeah. Another interesting thing about um, Ethiopia is um, they actually to intimidate you. They sharpen their teeth, so they sharpen their teeth to a point, or like all their teeth to to wow. come across. Yeah. Aggressive, yeah. They're very tribal. That's scary, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. Uh -huh. Yeah, as you can imagine, we working, we working going into a tooth, like with... the nerves and the teeth, and yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? We working like directly um, with Ethiopians, or yeah. So it's a part of the job is um to get locals work, um and to yeah. help them out, sort of thing. Um, and for them to not hate us as much as they might um, in the, uh, previously. Um, and we also did a water ball for yeah. them as well. Um, and we found cool little things for them. Um, like at one time we, get, we went past a tip and we found a foosball table. 
um, and we gave them to the kids and yeah, we, we got to interact with them and um, it yeah. was cool that we got to do a water walk for them. It was, um, it was good to, to give back instead of um, just mm. drilling a hole for a large yeah, company. Did you, did you stay in a camp? Did you stay in a camp there or just like local we, accommodation? Or? Yeah, so it was a makeshift uh, camp. Um, there was a lot of um, like TP style setups and we actually slept in sea containers with air cons in them. Oh, okay. There was um, bed yeah. bugs, insane amount of bed bugs. So you'd, you'd wake up. You go on a bed, you know that you're not even away from the, the shit per se. Um, yeah, you've got bed bugs and yeah. you'd wake up with sores and yeah, it's just, it was disgusting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, um, that's pretty hectic. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that's covered a lot of, a lot of our questions. Oh, yeah. So you were saying that's how you got into kettlebell training and that's what you do now. And I've also noticed on your Instagram. You um you train like every day. I've even seen you training while you're on the side or on the job. Yeah, we're doing testing at the time. I wasn't too sure if I should put that up or not, but I was like, fuck it, should be right. Um yeah, so at one stage there I was in the um in the gold fields over in WA and there was no it was a camp job. Um so there's no it's not a mine site or anything like that. It was going it's gonna be a mine site eventually, because uh, we found a bit of bit of good minerals over there. Um, but yeah, so all we had access to were yeah. two light kettlebells. So I uh, to get my fix per se, um, I was doing a ridiculous amount of reps with uh, like 12, 16 kilo kettlebells. Um, and then mm-hmm. from doing that, I was looking it up on YouTube. I was um, a lot of the Russian army sort of stuff is from kettlebells, and um, it just yeah. branched off from there. And then now I just yeah, I love them. Love the way uh, way that the weight sits in the kettlebell. Um, all the different things that you can do with it, with a full body workout, um, cardio, strength, endurance, all that sort of stuff. Um, so now I've got yeah, yeah. every kettlebell from uh, what from twenty kilos up to forty eight. Yeah, oh, and um, yeah, I love Jesus. it, love it. Um, and yeah, now so oh, no, um, when I go to random jobs here and there, I even um, I just buy kettlebells and get them sent to the post post office, and yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. I got kettlebells um, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you just you could keep one on the rig, couldn't you? Just about. Yeah, as long as um, as long as the other blokes out there are interested in it, which I'm lucky enough for the moment they are. So yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Getting away with it. Oh, nice. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, well, that that's um that covers a lot of our questions. Um, Specifically to your um, your job, I've got a few questions for you that I wanted to ask. Um, they're just some random ones, actually, off Tim Ferriss's um, tribe of mentors, and I just like to pick one or two or a couple of questions out of there. So, um, love my podcast. So, yep. The Tim first Farris. one is, um, yep. So, if you could have a massive billboard sign anywhere, where would uh, it be, and what would it say? Be nice. Shoot, like just be nice to each other. <laughs> Have a cold shower. Say say your gratitudes in the morning. Um, be grateful for the simplest of things. Yeah. Like right now, I'm looking across at um, Mount uh-huh. Wellington, which is down at Hobart. Um, yeah, just be grateful uh-huh. for the simplest of things. Um, yeah, so just say, yeah. Be grateful. Be grateful. Big block. Yeah. 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 Nice. That's um, you've you stung me there. I've nice. thought about that sort of thing before, even though I've heard him ask that. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be grateful. Yep. Nice. Um. All right. The next one. Uh, your best investment for uh one hundred dollars or less. Anything. Um. I actually stole one off. Um. I think it's Sarah Sigmund's daughter. And I bought it for my oh, wife, yeah. Lou. Um, and it was where, uh-huh. so you know how you always use your phone to wake yourself up, say if you're working away or, you know, to, for your alarm. So it's like buzzing yep. at your ear first thing when you wake up. Uh, it's, a, it's a Philips, the brand Philips uh, clock. And it, it just it's just a massive light that beams out into your room and that's what actually wakes you up. So natural light, well, it's not natural light, but it looks, it's equivalent of natural light to wake you up. Instead of having your phone yep. buzzing. Wow. Oh no, we've lost him again, guys. 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As you notice, we had one last dropout, which concluded our episode. Uh, we managed to cover everything that we wanted to. So um, thanks for tuning in once again. Don't forget to click subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. All the best, guys.